So this video is going to be about induction cookers. So uh, some of you may remember this thing, which I bought probably about two years ago now. This is a, a duct top induction cooker. Uh, this is sold under a couple different names. And uh, I've had this for about two years. And I think that uh, going back, this is probably the best uh, bang for buck in terms of kitchen gadgetry I've probably ever bought. Um, I use this thing pretty much every day. Um, and it's pretty much entirely replaced my conventional electric stove just because it's so fast and reliable and I like that. And uh, the fan in it is just as shitty as ever. The bearings are shot, you know, it's, it was an $80 um, induction cooker and you know, what can you really expect? And anyway, I was uh, doing some shopping and I came across this on Amazon uh, for $55. So this was actually cheaper than this. And uh, this is a Midia or Mydia, I'm not sure how you say this. Um, uh, this is just an induction cooker. And it's, uh, as you can kind of tell, it's a lot nicer looking. Um, the interface is a lot more intuitive and modern. And uh, the whole unit is just styled much nicer. And uh, I thought I would just pick it up because I've actually been, been wanting a second one. Um, just so that I can do two things at once without having to use the electric. Um, I can actually do two things on induction at once, which is nice. And also, it would give me the opportunity to try a different cooker from a different company just to compare and, and uh, sort of test. And that's kind of what this video is about. Because, um, spoiler alert, there's actually some interesting uh, behavior that I uh, can't quite explain. And uh, that's, that's good because, uh, you know, when I see a surprising and interesting result... Um, it means that there's an opportunity an opportunity to learn something, and uh, I'm definitely learning something in, in the process of doing this investigation. So this unit here is rated at 1800 watts, and when they say rated, it means at the wall, um, you know, at, on, the, on the plug, that's the maximum it can pull. And this is rated for 1500 watts, so it, it is a lesser power um, capable device. Um, I also don't know what the coil size is in this, so I've taken this apart, and I know the coils go to somewhere in between these two rings. Um, I haven't taken this apart, so I don't know where the coils are. So for my testing, I'm using the biggest cookware that I have just to cover this entire area, just in case, you know, to, to make it fair so that I'm uh, using up all the coil uh, in between these uh, units. And uh, uh, I'm going to be testing these using my, uh, my kilowatt, which uh, you've seen in uh, other videos. And it's a little difficult to read, but I'll move the camera so you can see it. And uh, that's going to be measuring the power from the wall in watts so that we can compare how much energy these things are actually putting into the cookware. And um, I'm going to be neglecting efficiency between the two because um, I don't think it's going to play very much of a role at all because both of these units have pretty much identical cooling systems in terms of you know fan and airflow. So the efficiencies aren't massively different between these two. So that shouldn't affect our the measurements that I'm seeing uh, by much at all, really. Uh, and we're dealing with pretty high power here, so I, I wouldn't be worried um, too much about that. So I wanted to, basically I have a couple different sets of cookware, and I wanted to see how they behaved on both of these um, cooktops. So my favorite set of pots is uh, this sort of antique set um, it's called the Townhouse by West Bend, and uh, these are three-ply stainless steel made in Canada uh, pots, and I believe these are pre-1959 because uh, I believe that was the last year West Bend made um, products in Canada. Uh, I'm sure some somebody may be able to correct me on that. I would love to get an actual date for these, but I love these because they work really, really well on this induction cooker. Um, Basically, they, they heat up the fastest of all of the cookware that I have. And uh, that is corroborated by the, uh, the power results. And I've just got some water in the bottom of these uh, pots because you should never run something on induction without some something to absorb, some sort of thermal mass in there to absorb the energy. Otherwise, the pot gets really, really hot really, really fast. And you, can, uh, you, can, you could damage the, the cooktop, I think. Um, it's just not a good idea. The second best set of cookware that I have is this um, sort of Chinese Wolfgang Puck branded um, cookware. I have no idea where I got this. This is relatively modern. And uh, this stuff, it's got a, the bottom is made of a different material than the sides because uh, the bottom uh, is magnetic, the sides aren't. So this does work on induction, but it, it on this unit is not as good 
as this, uh, and so you know I only use this if I'm you know lazy and all these are dirty or something. And I also have a frying pan, which is um, you know it's like a Tefal modern frying pan, and it's pretty much the same deal as this. Uh, so I think they're likely made of a similar material. And so uh, anyway, so I wanted to run uh, through all these things on this cooker first, so we can get some power numbers, and then I'll show you how this thing behaves. So I've got the duct top cooker plugged in, and just to show you uh, at idle, it draws around you know 0.3.4 watts and about 32 VA, which yields a power factor of 0.01, which is officially the worst power factor I think I've ever seen. So uh, definitely not gonna win any awards there. But anyway, we, uh, we can turn it on and we can bring it up to full power. And it seems to settle out around 1600 and 30 watts. Now the kilowatt is beeping and flashing because this is actually in excess of its maximum current rating and so the current shunt in this is actually overloaded. Um, so I'm not going to run this for too long but uh, this is pretty stable um, and it's already starting to boil. So I can uh, shut this off now that we have our measurement. So now testing with this uh, Wolfgang Puck Pot here bring it up to max power again. This one you may notice makes uh, some more noise uh, than the other one does. And if we look at the power, it is lower. It's uh, only about 1250 watts. So, uh, you know, this makes sense sort of. I knew this intuitively because water boils slower uh, in this pot than the other and uh, that is corroborated by the, uh, the power. So that's roughly what we're seeing with this particular cooker and I'll also try the frying pan just uh, for uh, completeness. And just a standard frying pan for uh, as our third sort of uh, data point here. And you'll see that this is roughly 1300 watts, so just a little bit more than the, uh, the previous pot, uh, no major difference. And it has a similar sound, so likely, um, you know, I would, I would suspect that they're made of similar materials. So I've got the new Medea induction cooktop plugged in, and uh, just uh, for comparison, this one draws a little bit more power uh, at idle, or in standby as they call it, so it's about just about one watt, um, and it draws about 47, uh, 47 VA, so its power factor is actually uh, just about the same, maybe a smidge better than the other one, but uh, still horrific. So they both seem to use a very similar standby supply. Um, which uh, I'm actually now more intrigued as to uh, to opening this to see uh, the differences between the circuitry because uh, it would be really really intriguing to to find the same power electronics in both of these and the only thing that's different is the control panel um, that would be uh, that would be pretty awesome to see that um, you know one design that's just been cloned and copied so many times but anyway I'll leave that for the teardown. So this one, we will uh, turn it on and we'll bring it to maximum power, which is 1500 watts. And this is the uh, West Bend pot here. And so looking at the power on this, we see 830 odd watts, which uh, is substantially lower than the 1600 watts that we saw before. In fact, this is half the power we saw on this unit. And you know, we, I would expect this to be lower power because, of course, uh, you know, it is a lower power cooktop, but this is 1500 watts compared to 1800 watts. And, you know, that is not 50% less power. So something interesting is going on here. And it gets more interesting when I use the other cookware. So with the Wolfgang Puck uh, pot, again, on maximum here. you'll notice that we get roughly 1200 watts. And that is the interesting result. We get a lower power, a substantially lower power on the older cookware, which performs exceptionally well on this one. And yet the newer cookware, which performs you know, relatively poorly on this one, performs much better on uh, this cooktop, despite its lower 
total output power. In fact, I would say that uh, between the two, um, you know, the difference in power, you know, the, the 1250 watts or so uh, that this thing can pump into this pot versus the 1200 watts this one can pump in, they're almost matched, um, which is very strange to me. And the frying pan is exactly the same. So again, max power on the frying pan on this unit, and we see around around you know 1150 to 1200 watts. So again, roughly comparable with what we saw on this unit. And this is incredibly strange to me um, because I I can't entirely figure out what what is going on here. Um, I suspect that there is something to do with the switching frequency. Um, that's, that's my best guess, is that these two operate at different frequencies, and somehow that affects the efficiency of transfer into the material. Um, now, I know that like skin depth is important and other things, but that is, um, you know, the thickness of the, the pot matters, um, but I'm not sure what, what effect the switching frequency has on it. I couldn't, I did a bit of quick Googling, but I wasn't able to find any, you know, research papers or anything that, uh, uh, you know, were, were easily explained what was going on here. And this doesn't seem to be something that people talk about. Um, you know, it's not like a, a, a spec that's published anywhere in the, you know, the product specifications, nor does anyone seem to search for it. So, um, yeah, this is very interesting. This sort of flipped my view on, you know, what, what is best. Um, and I'll probably I'll, I'll probably do the numbers and I'll I'll put the uh, you know the, the 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 relative performance given their maximum output powers and I'll 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 see you know which one actually comes out on top when you put that into uh, consideration you know, in terms of like percent efficiency per pot per unit um, but yeah so clearly it's not just about you know buying the most powerful cooker um, because you know when you buy like a regular electric stove right you know, if, if there's a stove that has a particular output power, um, all stoves with that output power will, will behave exactly the same because they're just dumping energy into a resistor, which is turning it into heat. And, you know, power in, you know, power out equals power in. You expect it to be exactly the same, but that does not appear to be the same with induction cooktops. So um, I, I don't really know if there's any good, good way you can f know this without actually experimenting um, with the cookware you have. Uh, because clearly th there's there's a difference here that uh, you know is not published anywhere. So um, you know if you it's it, I think it's actually it's actually very possible that if in, you know as we've shown um, a a it is it is possible that a a lower power unit could potentially outperform a higher power unit um, depending on the cookware you have. So uh, I think what I'm going to do in a follow up video, of course, I'm going to take this apart at some point. I do want to look inside, especially now that I know that the power supplies both suck in standby, so I'm really curious now as to how that's done. Um, but also I may try and actually measure the switching frequencies of these, maybe with a little magnetic coil that's near them with a scope, or maybe I will actually, maybe I'll use a microphone and actually try to pick up the vibrations, the, like the acoustics uh, that they emit, and uh, maybe, maybe that'll be enough, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I definitely want to see at least the frequencies and, and maybe how they start up um, I wonder if there is actually an algorithm in these things. Maybe it scans different frequencies to find the best one. And, you know, this one's capable of doing it, and it's just making a mistake on the old cookware. Uh, whereas this is a fixed frequency. I don't really know. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, do some investigation. And if you know, um, or if you have some experience with this, uh, by all means, uh, leave it in the comments. Uh, I'd uh, love to hear from you. So uh, definitely there's more to come on this uh, topic. Um, but until then, thanks for watching.